What's up everybody, Stance Mice here. Today I want to do a walkthrough of the Korg M1 VST plugin. I find that the user interface isn't very user friendly. It's a bit hard to use. And this plugin is very important if you are making house music or any other 90s inspired songs. So I figured I'd do a overview of some of the essential features so you could better understand how to use this plugin. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you'd like to check out any of my serum preset packs, head on over to store.sansmars.com. The Korg M1 synth, the plugin is modeled after the hardware synthesizer that became really popular in the 90s. And there's a lot of classic house sounds that are in this plugin. So if I go into the browser here, let's just listen to the M1 house piano. This is used in a lot of house songs. And there's also an organ sound that's really popular, this organ too, which is used in Show Me Love and many other house songs. And then there's like over 3000 presets and then you can layer sounds on top of each other. So there's an endless amount of combinations. So if we just take a look, I have that organ sound playing. You see at the top left-hand corner, the prog mode. So prog is program. That's what they call each of these sounds. You have combi, so combination, or multi for multiple. Then you have the master volume. You have this file option. I believe you can take in files from the real M1 synthesizer and load them into this program. You have some options to save some of the programs and then also import any data. So I haven't ever used that. I haven't had any other files I need to import into this VST but that is there in case you need it. So then you have another option here to write. So if I make some adjustments to the sound and I wanna save it as a preset, this is your save as a preset. So I can hit here and these will be not grayed out if I make some edits to the combination or a multi. So let's see, we have multi selected program and program. So if I make any comment, any edits to like a program then I can write and save it this program. So. Let's go to selected program and see what happens. So we've got write program. It takes me to this whole browser menu. So we've got some options where I can tag it with, let's say I made this sound like a piano. So I could select piano or give some characteristic options. So maybe it's a bit fatter. So I want to say it's fat. And then I click on this user bank, which will be saved into my user bank of all the sounds in the presets that I'm creating and then click OK. So you've got all these options for these user banks. There's so many different options. And if I don't want to save anything, I can click, click this X to get out of it. And that's all saved into this browser menu. So this is where you can view all of the sounds where I just saved that sound. Um, but also the last thing on this menu before we move on is the utility. So if I'm making a sound in this option, and I'm going to go through each of these combine multi and program or prog, if I'm making a sound in this menu here and I want to copy it over to the multi, then I can hit utility and just copy from um, any of these other modes. So if I'm in this program mode, I've got the organ and I'm in this combine mode, I can hit copy from program mode to one of these timbres. They call all of these sound slots timbres. So I just copied in organ two because I had it in the program from here into this slot here. So they call them timbres in this combine mode, but you can call them programs or I just call them like all of the individual sounds. So as I'm in the browser, you can see when I select these, these are all red. So if I select this program mode, this just allows me to play one sound at a time. We've got the multi, which allows me to play multiple sounds. And then the combine mode, which allows me to combine multiple sounds together on top of each other. So if I go into this browser mode and I I have this program highlighted going to browser. We've got different sounds and I'll click piano so we can preview some of the piano sounds. And I'm just previewing the sounds. Now in order to lock in the sound that I want to select, I need to double click on it. So I double clicked it and now I have that new piano sound. If I'm browsing and I don't double click, but I exit out of this browser mode, then it's going to go back to that first sound. It's not going to save the sound that I was listening to in the browser mode. And that's a mistake that I make very often is I'm just like previewing the sounds. And for other synths, it usually changes the sound. But for this uh, M1, you have to like double click, which is a bit annoying. 
So there's also this, also this cool feature up here, which is called preview. And there's a drop down menu. So you have some different options where it can play like a predefined melody. So I'm going to hit this preview. So you can hear it's playing these uh, pre programmed melodies. I can go into arpeggio, it'll just play in like an arpeggio. So let's preview that. So there I went into some of the organ sounds. I've got a bass and chord option. Let's go ahead and hit preview, see what that sounds like. So that's a really cool way to hear sounds and context, like playing some chords. And then you have one octave playing just the octaves of the chord. We have a slow chord one and then a drum assigned check, which is just like playing the notes one by one. If you want to hear all of the drum hits, so there's some drum kits in here. I'll hit this one. Let's do standard kit and hit preview. And we'll do drum assigned check. So it's just playing through all of the keys. So that's a pretty cool thing. And then I can go back to piano. I can select some characteristics and then it will filter out these sounds. And then I can hit clear to clear that. And then I can hit clear to clear the instruments. And then you see where it says the PRO prog program. You have the card number and the number and then the name. And this is just because I believe the, I've never used the original M1, but I believe you had these like cards that you would insert into the uh, synth and then that would have all of the sounds inside of the card. So here you can see like a little image of what the cards look like and you can select all of the cards and they have different images. And so this one, uh, this one says synth one, this one's like drums. So you have uh, all these cards in here. And so this is something where it's like, I guess it's cool. It's not really necessary. They're just like trying to make it more like the original synth, but it's not very like user friendly, especially like these are the where you save your presets and then you have all these cards. So the the most useful way to search sounds is just go through the search and select the instrument and the character. Um, here's these like T1 cards, which look like floppy disks. So that's kind of like how you use this browser. I'm going to go back to the piano and just this M1 house piano. So after the program, we can go into this multi-mode and this is useful if you have multiple MIDI channels. So let me select this MIDI so we can see what's happening. Now we have these slots here. And in the multi-mode, they call these tracks. And in the combi mode, they call these timbres um, for some reason. So I think it's because this track here, let's see what this first sound is. It's kind of like a pad. So I'm going to go into this drop down menu and I can load in a different sound. It's going to open the browser menu, put this M1 house piano there and I can mute it, solo it. And then this has IFX for when I, if I want the insert effects on or off and the insert effects, if I go to this tab, you can find the insert effects. You have two options for effects. You can see all the effects types. There's a lot of your common effects like reverb, delay, chorus, flanger, compressor, and these the routing type is going to be serial. And then you can have this effect as well. So I could add on like a hall reverb and a delay. And then I can, so let's put on like a hall reverb. Adjust the dry and wet, and then also put on maybe like a delay after that, and I can turn it on and off by selecting that button. So that's what that insert effects uh, option does. It actually, for each of these little programs, so I can click on each of these, and let's load in a different sound here. Let's say, I'll do like an organ sound, so I can do the organ two. Now, I only have one uh, MIDI channel that I'm using. So if we go to this MIDI tab, we can see I've got all these MIDI channels. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm not going to hear this organ sound because I'm only using the MIDI channel one. But if I go to the combination tab, it's going to put everything into this one MIDI channel because it's going to stack all of these sounds. <laughs> So what you're hearing is you're hearing all of these sounds played at once. And so I can play around with the level. I can play around with the panning. I can play around with like soloing one and muting all the others. I can mute one of these. I can add effects to just one of these. So let's go ahead and just check out the insert effects as I click on these effects. 
So you can see that the insert effects changes for each of these programs. So you can add different uh, insert effects to each of these sounds. And then if I go back to this MIDI, you can see the key zone. So I could have, uh, you can see this tubular one is assigned only to the lower half of my keyboard. Uh, so as I play those higher notes, you can't hear that like tubular sound anymore. And then you can transpose it, you can detune it. So you have all, like, all these options for adjusting the MIDI. So as I go into the browser with the combinations, you can see there's all these different presets. If I double click, you can see all these layered presets. So let's go to organ. Let's listen to an organ layer. So here's a pipe organ and a choir. Maybe I don't want the choir to be as loud so I can lower the level. So pretty cool if I uh, select the browser uh, and can play with re around with these presets. So basically, like if you select the have this one selected, the browser is going to be different. This is also one thing I didn't realize is that the browser is kind of different each time I um, select a combination multi or or the progression or the program. So the thing is, when you're in this program mode, you don't have these three options either grayed out for the performance MIDI and the master effects. But when I go into the multi or combine mode, then you can play around with these settings. So you have this master effects. And if I'm in the, let's see, the combine mode, uh, and I want to add on effects to all of the sounds. So instead of adding on in insert effects individually to each of the sounds, I can add on, add on master effects, which goes on all the sounds at once. And this is where I can add in like a hall reverb or something to all of the layers of the effects. So let's go and add on a hall reverb. So there, I just saturated the whole thing in reverb. And then there's also some routing options. So you can go serial or parallel. So serial means that the effects one goes into the effects two, and then parallel means that they're individually being output. So I don't, I hope I don't have to go into a whole discussion about the difference between those routing types, but that's, it gives you that option. If you want to do that, then you have some panning options. You can click on these squares, see how annoying, how tiny all these little buttons are, but you can turn these on and off the effects on and off and play around with the panning. So that's what that master effects does. So now let's move into these tabs here. So I'm going to stay in this com by mode and we'll go to easy. And we're going to be have this. Let's go ahead and we have this top one activated. So let's just go ahead and clear it. And then maybe I'll load in the M1 house piano because that's just the sound I like to use the most. And let's go ahead and just clear this. All right, so let's go ahead and take off the master effect hall. I put that on. And go back in this easy. So now within each of these programs or these sounds, you can see that there are oscillator modes. So I could actually add on another sound on top of this piano. So I could add in like a, a choir and then adjust this level and I could go to this browser. I could also just see other sounds I want to add and exit out of that. Now, when you have this oscillator mode at double, then you have double the amount of parameters you can edit. So I'm gonna only use the single mode just for this example, but as you can see, when I click double, then it's like, now you have two filters, now you have two of these envelopes. And so VDFEG stands for Variable Digital Filter Envelope Generator. <laughs> so there's two of these because I have it on the double oscillator mode, but we're just gonna use a single mode. And then we have the VDAEG, which is the Variable Digital Amplitude Envelope Generator. Um, so that's what those two mean. You have these envelopes on a bunch of other synths. If you're familiar, you have a envelope for like the filter and then also the amplitude. So, and then you have your uh, insert effects. You can play around with your insert effects here. So this is like the easy mode. Um, this is kind of like maybe all that you would really need to go into instead of going into the more advanced modes here. So. Let's go ahead and just play around with my filter. So there's that cutoff. I can add in resonance. I can play around with my envelope. So I can click on these little squares. I can click on the tabs. It highlights the little squares. So this is my envelope for my filter.
and this is going to be the intensity of that envelope on my filter so you can play around with that and then you've got your insert effects so i could play around with my effects here let's say i have a hall reverb i can adjust this dry and wet maybe i want to add on a delay like that. So th these are just some basic features that you have in a lot of other synths. And then we have our, our envelope for our amplitude. And as you can see, I can adjust these uh, parameters to be a bit more like advanced than your usual envelope, or I can just, I don't know, do the, all these like weird uh, things, changing the decay and the sustain. And also with this envelope one, I can even make the decay time go negative and go up. So let's just see what happens if I do that. So you can hear how the filter closes and then opens back up. So that's kind of like a, a interesting thing you can do with this ADSR for the filter. And before we move on, the offset mode, if I have the double, you have your options for the filters. You can select which one you're going to be editing and then you can link them together so you can edit them both at the same time. So that's only if we're doing the double mode and then you have the drums mode, which just turns your sound into a drum kit. So uh, I don't know why you would use that, but that's there if you want to use a drum kit uh, instead for some reason. So I'm going to put this into single mode and now we're going to move into the more advanced tabs. So now if I just go into the oscillator tab, you can see I had the same things. I can change the modes. If I go to the oscillator mode to double, it opens up the oscillator two menu. So once again, this was just the easy menu because we didn't need all these features. But if you want to explore more features and you go into these more advanced tabs or menus. So we've got the single oscillator on, and then we can go into the browser, maybe select a different piano. We have the level of the oscillator. We have the octave. I could add a pitch envelope. So I could add a pitch envelope. I could play around with the velocity sensitivity uh, with regard to this pitch envelope. So depending on how hard or soft I hit my notes on my keyboard, then that will determine how much of the envelope is being applied to that pitch. So if I put this all the way up, then and if I hit a key on my keyboard really hard, You can hear the harder that I hit it, the higher in pitch it goes. And then you can also play around with the envelope time. So if I hit it harder, it'll be shorter. The uh, pitch envelope will be shorter. So you can play around with this velocity sensitivity. So let's go ahead and just take that off. And I'm just going to hit command on my Mac to reset the parameters. You just command and click to reset the parameters. Then you have your pitch MG. So that is like your pitch modulation generator. So I can add on like LFOs essentially. So if I hit this sine wave and this key sync is on. So that means that each time that I hit a key that it resyncs this waveform. So let's go and raise up this intensity. And you can hear what it's doing. If I raise up this delay, then it will delay the effect. So if I play a note, then you can hear that it delays the uh, wave form from causing that pitch modulation. I can also turn on tempo sync, so then I can choose like uh, what kind of uh, one fourth, one eighth, what note I want this tempo sync to. And then also, let's go ahead and take that off. We can change the frequency. And play around with that. So those are all the options on this oscillator menu. Let's go to the VDF. So then we have some of the similar uh, parameters we can play around with on the filter. So we can adjust the filter envelope. You have the velocity sensitivity. 
So this is already at pretty high, so I can play around with the velocity sensitivity. Actually, let's go ahead and take off the uh, pitch modulation. So then you have your velocity sensitivity options. So I can raise this up and then play a note on my keyboard and hit it hard. And so if I raise this up to here, if I play a note softer, then more of that filter will be applied. Or, or more of that envelope will be applied and then you can play around with the time again and you have some options for the time polarity. And then keyboard tracking. So if I play a note lower on my keyboard, we have this at negative 99. We can hear that the higher up I go on the keyboard, the more of that cutoff is applied. If I do it the opposite, then as I play those lower notes, then you can hear more of the filter and the filter cutoff being released as it go higher up on the keyboard. And then you can play around with the time again. So this relates to this filter time, the envelope time, and then the polarity and the center key. So like almost way too many options than you would ever need. So that's why maybe just using this easy menu is uh, enough. And then you have your uh, filter modulation. So I could do the sine wave, turn this on. And then you can also tempo sync that. And if I go into my VDA menu, then you can see essentially the same things again. So this is related to the amplitude. So we have the envelope there, uh, velocity sensitivity, keyboard tracking, and then also your options for adding in like your LFO modulations. So after those menus, then you have your control options. So if you have a keyboard, then you can apply like aftertouch and you have your pitch bend options. So this is going to be for this specific sound. So we have the pitch bend up to semitones. If I play around with my pitch bend, I can also go to just this global here and I can add a global pitch bend to all of the sounds. So if I do something like plus 12 and I enable this, then that pitch bend will be applied to all of the sounds, not just the selected sound here. Because if I have another sound, so let's put a, another sound, let's put like toy piano, then this can have its own like pitch bend amounts as well so on the control. But since I have the global enabled, then this is grayed out. So let's go ahead and disable that and let's see what that looks like. So I could set the toy piano one to like plus five and then I could set this one to like plus two or something if I want to have different pitch bend amounts. <laughs> but that end up sounding kind of weird. So I'd recommend just changing that on your global. And also in this global menu, you have options for changing the MIDI channel, transposing the whole thing, you can save this as a default, output settings in your voicing number. And so I'm not sure if I talked about this performance tab yet, but this is a tab that allows you to MIDI map any of your knobs or parameters on your keyboard, on your MIDI keyboard to like the cutoff or the attack time or release time. So if you're performing and you want to Play around with the cutoff, you can see as I raise this up, this cutoff is being applied to all of the different sounds. So let's say on my combination, I have a house piano and a clarinet. Let's go ahead and apply this cutoff. And that's just being applied to both of those sounds. So that's how you would use any of these parameters in this performance tab. So hopefully that helps you better understand how to use this M1 plugin better. You probably don't need to know how to use all of these features, but as long as you know how to load a preset and then alter some of the effects, then you should be good to go. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and also please subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. And if you'd like to check out any of my senior preset packs, I'll put links down below for those as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.